welcome to my channel. It's a glorious day outside, so what I thought I'd do is I would bake something that is a little bit more summery, maybe. Baking, isn't it? It's cake. What can I say? Anyway, today we're going to be doing gluten-free. I'm going to be doing gluten-free scones first of all, date scones to be exact. Now I've not done this recipe before, it is my own recipe, so we're going to see how it goes. If it's a fail then you've learned something. But before I continue, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody who's subscribed so far and please feel free to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button if you like what I'm doing. Anyway, let's get into this. So, first of all, we have 10 ounces of self-raising gluten-free flour. This is Dove's Farm flour, and I have um, sifted this already into the bowl. It's already got xanthan gum in the mixture, so we don't need that in this one. Um, xanthan gum helps to bind it. It acts like, it, well, it is what it says. It's a gum that helps to stick molecules together which creates then the gluten aspect of the cake or so it will help it stick together more. Well. To my 10 ounces of self-raising gluten-free flour, what I'm going to add is three ounces of plant spread going in there. Come on, there we go, all in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it in by hand. So we're going to rub the bread into the flour until we've got fine bread crumbs so just get your hands in there break the spread up gently try not to be too harsh with it because um, you want your scones to be nice and light and once it starts getting into small pieces what you need to do is kind of get it in your fingers and rub it together rub it with the flour just keep doing that it doesn't have to be anything too hard just little bit at a time and just lift it and rub it lift it and rub it until you get fine breadcrumbs and once you get to a stage where you've mainly got breadcrumbs you can just rub it between your hands like that just up and down oh I found a lump so we get rid of that lump as we go all you're doing is checking to see that you've got rid of all the lumps when you've got fine breadcrumbs which is this consistency here what you need to do is add your sugar so we have here one ounce of caster sugar so gently pull that across there move the sugar around and incorporate it into the flour there we go once you can't see sugar anymore what you need to pop in is your dates now I've got three ounces of dates here and they're finely chopped so we'll disperse them evenly throughout our scones and now we have to cover them in the flour this stops them falling to the bottom of our bake when we bake the scones once you've got them all covered in your mixture it's time to get your wet ingredients together our wet mixture will be 90 grams of yogurt, a teaspoon of vanilla, which we're going to pop in there, and an egg. Um, Gluten-free flour does tend to take up a lot of moisture, so it will dry things out really quickly. So I've got an extra egg because they say it helps. So I'll mix that first, and then we'll add the other egg. Give it a good hard tap on the side of your bowl and then making sure you've got no shell, pop it in and then beat it in with your whisk. So that's what it should look like when it's ready. It smells like custard. Mm, nice. Okay, so getting our dry ingredients, we're going to pour all of this into here. Now it may look like a lot, we need that moisture to help the flour along. The flour will soak up a lot of the moisture. So mix it in and then bring it together slowly in the bowl. We're going to do now, we're gonna try and not add any 
further flour to this because it will make it dry. So taking a, bit, a piece of parchment paper, oops, pop it on your table, your worktop, whatever you want to call it, and we're going to tip out our scone mixture onto our sheet. So then we're going to bring it together gently. Don't work it too hard. And we're going to let it sit for a minute or two. Okay. So my oven is on gas mark seven. And I'm about to cut out my scones. So I've washed my hands. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of flour. Just this just so that the scone cutter doesn't stick to my scones. Swish it around in my scone cutter. Now I've got quite a small one here, it's about two inches. Um, and we're going to start cutting out our scones. And then when you've got any left, I will get some flour on your hands and just bring it together gently. Okay, and then press it into shape. Now we're gonna bake them in an oven for 15 minutes on gas mark seven. See you in a minute. Hello, well it's taste test time and um, my scones have come out quite well really. I wasn't sure whether they would but they have done. They're lovely and golden and the only thing I might say is next time I think I'd do them twice the thickness they do because they have spread slightly with the extra egg in there which I was advised to put in to keep them moist so let's see if they are still moist. So I have prepared, excuse me, one of my scones here we are, and we'll give them a whirl, basically. Mm, very good. They're not, they're not dry and claggy. They're just delicious, those. Mm, very, very nice. Hello again, and for my next recipe, what I'm going to be doing is rhubarb and apple crumble. And it's going to be gluten free yet again. So we're starting with um, 100 grams of self-raising gluten free flour. Again, it's a dust farm. To that, what I'm going to add is 100 grams of gluten free oats. And 50 grams of ground almonds. And I'm going to give that a bit of a mix with my hand until it's all combined is 125 grams of spread so that's vegetarian spread or plant-based spread to you and me and we're going to rub that in with our fingers again now this time you don't need to be too adept at this it doesn't need to be like breadcrumbs if there is chunks in it it's not a big issue because what will happen is it'll just turn into a lovely crispy bit And once you've got a consistency that looks something like, well, granola maybe, that's what you're looking for on this occasion. And what we're going to do is put our sugar in and I've got 125 grams of demerara sugar going in here. So sprinkle. Okay. So what I have here is some stewed apple and rhubarb. All I did with the rhubarb was cut it up into one inch chunks, put it in a pan, with a little bit of water in the bottom and one cooking apple and then I left it to stew for about five minutes until it started breaking up a little bit. I had then added um, a teaspoon of ginger and then I sugared it to taste and what I mean by to taste is just not too tart for you so just keep tasting it. What I'm going to do now is mix in demerara sugar, the 125 grams of demerara sugar into the crumble mixture that we have here. Okay so in we pop. Now we like in this house our crumble to be quite thick so I'm just going to keep going at it until it fills the dish. Just paddle it in the middle and then spread it out is the best way to do it. And then we're going to bake it in an oven, gas mark six, 
for about half an hour until it's golden brown. Just move these little nuggets around. Good. Right, it's going in the oven. Don't press it down, by the way. It's going in the oven for about half an hour. I've also got my rhubarb crumble here, which looks delicioso, which I'm going to have a, a try of in a minute. I've just got a little bit to try it. Um, the crumble looks lovely. Let's give it a whirl. Mmm. Taste the ginger. Oh, that's gorgeous. And that crumble is lovely and crunchy. Mmm. You would not guess that that is gluten free. Mm. Thank you for watching today. If you want to give my recipes a whirl, let me know in the comments below how you get on. Um, think about subscribing if you don't already. Thumbs up for any, if you like it. Let me know as well what other things you'd like me to do. Anyway, for today, thank you for watching. Liz out.